how to be magical when you don't feel magical. So what I want to talk about today is the magical tool of ritual. Now, if you're new to the path, you may not know exactly what ritual is. Ritual and casting a spell can be different or they can be the same. But a ritual can really be something that we do to set the intention for a spell, set the intention for a creative effort in our life, or it can be to help us focus, or it can be to commune with the gods and the goddesses. We have an altar that stands in our living room, and most of the time what is on that altar is a dedication to Lilith, to the goddess Lilith, because my husband and I both are devotees of this goddess. Um, it, ritual can be very, very simple, and it can be very healing. We have ritual. Uh, my organization holds rituals about four times a year. And I encourage people to come to these rituals, be with other people, come and sit and relax in the healing energy of ritual. And you can do that at home. So ritual involves, now everybody does it different, this is the way I do it, uh, lighting candles, burning some incense, saying some words that kind of specify what that ritual is for. So you might um, you might want to cast a circle. I think it's important to cast a circle. I mean, there's a lot of hardcore witches who are like, you have to cast a circle because every good thing and every bad thing on the ether shows up to your ritual. Okay, all right. I, I'm not going to speak to that. But what I will speak to is I think casting a circle is important because it creates a sacred space. The old ones used to say uh, a place that is not a place in a time that is not a time. So this is really this, this bubble that we create before we do our rituals is um, very, very healing and um, very sacred. It creates the sacred space for us to do whatever we need to do. And it does kind of call attention to our angels and our dragons and our fairies and our spirit guides. It's like, hey, I'm here. I want to say this out loud. This is the vibration that I am setting for this piece of work. Then I light candles and I burn incense. I might do a little um, activity. I might call my others by name. Uh, I might say out loud the intention of what it is that I'm trying to create. And when I use ritual or a spell in this manner, I am really kind of cementing that here's my project. I am working on this project. But I think the really important thing to keep in mind is there's no right way or wrong way to do ritual. Um, spirits don't hurt us. People hurt us. And so, you know, some negative energy may show up to watch, but you are so powerful. Your energy and your light and your aura is so powerful that those negative energies really can't hurt you. Negative people in your life can hurt you, though. So, you know, we really want to um, use that moment as a creative moment. Or you can use ceremony and ritual to come into communion with your gods and goddesses. Now, I believe they're with us all the time. I believe, I feel... I feel covered and loved and wrapped and protected by them all the time. But you might want to focus on that. If you want to focus on a visit with your others, a ritual is a good way to do that. 
You can light candles and dedicated to that's dedicated to them. You can burn incense dedicated to them. You can have things on your altar that is dedicated to them. I started a relationship with Ganesh years ago, years and years and years ago, 20, 24 years ago. And one of the things that he asked of me was um, garnet. Garnets are a semi-precious stone that are very, very deep burgundy. Um, and so I got in my car and went to our local spirit shop, and I found a little uh, five-inch, six-inch statue, ceramic statue of Ganesh, um, and some garnets. And um, I came home. I was new to Ganesh, so I came home, and I made a little altar to him with uh, some um, some mala beads and his statue and some garnets that I had purchased and seasonally I would I would get greenery or flowers or something to make an offering to him and sometimes I would just sit I would just set his little altar I had a little portable altar and I would just set it on the coffee table and I would light the candles and I would burn the incense and I would sit in front of that altar and meditate so this is a form of ritual but it's a very private form of ritual. And I do public work. I mean, I run um, Magic of Life Pagan Ministries here in Southern Oregon. So we do public rituals. And for the first 20 years that uh, Magic of Life Pagan Ministries was in a service, we did a lot of ritual. We were doing all of the full moons. We were doing all of the pagan holidays on the wheel. We were doing uh, three years of magic school. There's actually four years of magic school, but we were running three years of magic school all the time. So this was crazy busy. And when we slowed down a little bit, COVID came and kind of suspended. We were like suspended for a little while. And once we got going again, that time had passed and we got going again. I realized that I, I didn't really want to do as much public ritual because my private ritual was really suffering. My private study was really suffering. And I have spiritual practices that I do every day. And those many times were falling by the wayside. So, when we slowed down a little bit, I was able to get into what I call a, a personal practice. And I was able to do more rituals with my gods and my goddesses. I was able to do uh, more meditation and more of my spiritual practices that I did. Um, so I just wanted to talk about ritual today and actually what it is and how, you know, um, Christopher Pinchek says that we are we should be driving, we are usually driving to an area, these are my words, not his, of instant magic, where we close our eyes, we have a visualization, and pretty soon after that, we see that thing manifest in our life. I agree. I think that's a wonderful goal with our, to, to get to with our magic. But I don't ever want to stop doing ritual. I don't ever want to stop communing with my others and casting spells with things. I mean, you get to a place with your magic where your thoughts become your spells and they become very powerful. This is good. But I think having props, magical props, setting up your altar, burning incense and candles and sitting in that magical energy is very powerful. Okay, that's it. I love you. I'll see you tomorrow.